Hey guys, welcome to Gods Unchained with the Professor. Alright, in this video we're going to go over Mirage 88 Magic OTK deck. 30 damage in one turn. Just for reference, Mirage has been working on this deck since last week. He played it during weekend ranked and managed an 83% win rate. He's been refining it all this time. And today we're going to showcase a new version of the deck which he feels is more refined. So the key pieces in this combo deck is the Lost in the Depths, Spell Slinging School Teacher, Academy Apprentice, Dimension Door, Form of Unity, and Helpful Aether Fox. We will be joined by Mirage, who will walk us through the playstyle and how to pilot the deck. Mirage is a top player. He is my teammate on TST. Mirage has achieved great things in Gods Unchained. He's gone three weekends in a row, 25 and 0, for a total of 75 and 0 record. He's won numerous community tournaments, and he's considered one of the top players in the game. All right, everyone, I have Mirage here, the creator of the combo deck for Form of Unity and the Spell Slinger School Teacher. Welcome, Mirage. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks. Great, great. All right, so you first brought this deck list to the TST Discord's attention. Um, it looks pretty pretty good and meaning that um, it can win around turn five turn six so before we dive into the deck just a quick question from me um, how did you come up with this deck idea did you just sort of um, looking through cards and it came to you did you accidentally like just look at a card and said oh this could be interesting or were you having a bad day and just wanted to uh, come up with a deck to destroy the GU community <laughs> Um, no, I had played somebody on ladder that had a deck that used school teacher to try to get an OTK. Um, it didn't use loss in the depth. It wasn't this structure, right? It was just like trying to draw a bunch of cards to get a bunch of combo pieces. Um, but I'd seen a deck that was using school teacher and then Academy apprentice, uh, just to try to kill you just by playing one ones. Um, it didn't use form of unity or anything. Um, and that just triggered me to look into trying to make the deck better. Um, the OTK was interesting and, and kind of fun. And generally anytime there's an OTK, and the magic can use uh, it. You can kind of abuse Lost in the Depths as a way to make it extremely consistent. Um, so it was just something I wanted to try building, and uh, sort of ended up on this list, which, as you said, pretty consistently can get an OTK on turn five or six. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, I've given it a try. Uh, I'm not too good at it, so we have Mirage here to kind of give a walkthrough on how to play the deck properly. Uh, he says it's straightforward, but it's not straightforward for me, so we have Mirage here to help us. You mentioned the uh, Spell Slinging School Teacher and the Academy Apprentice, Lost in the Depths, Form of Unity. So I guess walk us through real quick to what the combo is and sort of key cards besides those. Yeah, sure. Um, so the way Lost in the Depths deck works is uh, basically you, you stack your deck with a lot of cards of the same cost, in this case things that cost two. Uh, yeah, you can see there's 20 cards in the deck that cost two. Um, then you play Lost in the Depths on any two-cost creature. So a lot of the two-cost cards are creatures. Um, you can also do it on your opponent's creature, which is key. So if your opponent has a two-cost creature out, you can do it there and not even have to play your own, and it'll still uh, thin your deck. That'll get rid of every two-cost card in your deck and draw you a card, and that gets you to only combo pieces. So the, the combo pieces that are relevant are the Spell Slinging School Teacher, the Academy Apprentice, and the Form of Unity and Helpful Aether Fox. Um, so the way that the combo works is you use the Aether Fox to get your Form of Unity to zero cost, um, so that that then costs zero. Then you ideally use a Dimension Door to hit any of the one drops, doesn't matter which one, um, but you bring either of the Academy Apprentice to zero or a spell slinging, spell slinging School Teacher, excuse me, it doesn't matter which one, you bring him to zero. That allows you to go off on five mana. Um, if you happen to not hit on Dimension Door, then it's fine, it's six. But the way the combo works is you play two Spell Slinging School Teachers back to back, then you play four Academy Apprentices, um, and because of the school teacher, every time you play a 1-1, one, one, it deals two damage. So the first, or I should say the second school teacher deals two, and then each of the four academy apprentices does four each, which is 16. That does 18 damage just from playing the six creatures. Then you have six creatures on board, four of which has spell boost one, you use form of unity. That deals nine damage plus four for the spell boost, so it does 13. So you did 18 with the creatures, then you do 13 with the form of unity, and that gets you to 31 total damage for an OTK no matter what your opponent's health is at. Um, so that's the, the gist of the combo. Uh, the way you go off quickly is by using Lost in the Depths to get only to your combo cards. 
uh, and then again using Dimension Door to to draw into the remaining pieces. Um, so basically, as soon as you've played your Aether Fox into Form of Unity and you have all your other cards, you you go off, which is usually turn five, five and a half if you start Lost in the Depths in your opening hand. Um, so really, all the deck does is it tries to find Lost in the Depths as soon as possible, and uh, and then go off for the combo. Where you have room in this deck to build is basically all of the two drops. It's just like what what extra utility do you want from your two drops? Um, there's a few key ones. So uh, one of the key ones is Form of Wisdom. Um, so on Form of Wisdom, uh, you can draw a card and reduce its cost. So the reason that this one is key is that if you have it in uh, your early hand, it can get you around needing to use the helpful Aether Fox. Um, so you pretty much always use the the Clear Mind God Power with this deck, which then allows you, yeah, it allows you to force C2. Um, so this early in the game just lets you find your loss in the depths. You're, you're just going to keep digging for it until you find it. Uh, or if you happen to clear mind and you have a form of wisdom in your hand and you see that you can put form of unity on top of your deck, and that allows you to guarantee you to form of wisdom into a zero cost form of unity and completely skip past the need to use the help for Aether Fox. And that can just save you a turn um, of going off on the combo. So Form of Wisdom is, is a, I think, a must in the two drop slot. The other must in the two drop slot, uh, so there's 2x uh, Iron Tooth Goblins in the deck. The reason for that is this deck insta loses to the, uh, I think it's called the Talisman of Magic. Um, whatever the Talisman is, the Relic for, for Magic, that whenever uh, their god takes damage, it deals two damage to your strongest and one damage to your weakest. If that is equipped and on board, then as you try to go off, and as you're dealing damage to your opponent, it, it auto kills your your creatures, um, and, it, and it prevents your combo. So you need to have the two Iron Tooths in there if you're facing a deck that has the Magic Talisman. Is the only way to uh, to allow your combo to go off. Um, the other useful two drops here, you've got Vow of Champions, is a way to both uh, all for for time. It can draw you a card. It's just very flexible for whatever you need to either survive or uh, or dig for your combo. Um, and then the rest of the two drop slots is really sort of uh, up, to, up to personal preference. There's a lot of mix of card draw and damage in here. It's basically either you're going to try to prevent aggro from killing you with things like a Magnetic Blast or Tracking Bolt or Time Bomb, um, just things that can help you control the board. Uh, or you're going to try to draw cards and, and dig for your combo with things like Unencumbered Looter, uh, which is just a creature that draws a card in your afterlife with Safeguard Incantation. Uh, with Vortimer, with Palace's Wand. Um, so really, you're just either doing damage or you're digging for your combo, and then you try to go off with your combo. And that's pretty much it. That's that's the entirety of the deck. Uh, it is obviously very draw-dependent. Like, if you have Lost in the Depths in your opening hand, you can go off very quickly. If you don't, then you need to dig, and, and the deck can, can take a little too long to go off. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a fun and interesting deck. Um, I played it last weekend ranked and got to 18 wins with it, and that's probably the, like about as good as it can get. Uh, it's going to struggle versus some aggro decks. Just uh, even if you can go off turn five, a lot of times you you will die. Uh, you will die before that, or five and a half. Um, but 70 percent is pretty good. You're gonna you're gonna there are gonna be some decks you literally can't lose to because they can't disrupt your OKK. But uh, either way, it's a it's a fun OTK deck for sure. Great, thank you very much for the breakdown and going through the deck. I know you mentioned that a lot of the two drops are you know, utility dependent. Last question before we see this in action. Um, I know you've, you've set, you've gone through a couple iterations optimizing the list. Um, how close, how close do you think this deck is to optimization? Or do you feel like a lot of the two drops are really just for, you know, preferences and it's pretty interchangeable? I think a lot of the two drops are interchangeable just depending on what you happen to have in your collection. Um, like I said, Iron Tooth Goblin is probably the, the big one just because otherwise you auto lose to the Magic Talisman. Um, pretty much everything else you could swap out with other cards. Um, I, I think the rest you can mess around with and, and sort of see see what works for you. Um, I, I called out the ones that I think are the most valuable, but but yeah, pretty much everything in the two-job slot you can you can mess around with. Um, but play what play what you want, see what works for you. All right. Thanks for that, Mirage. Let's go ahead and uh, jump into action and see the deck firsthand. And while you're queuing up, I guess the only other things I know some people have similar OTK decks that have like uh, other cards outside of the two mana slot. Uh, this is as streamlined as possible to just try to maximize the consistency of of the OTK, which I, th I think is ideal. Um, I, I think it's better than trying to to dig and draw all the multiple pieces. Otherwise, you're you're going to lose to aggro every time. This deck at least has a shot versus aggro. If you start with Lost in the Depths, so I think anything that gets a little 
funkier than this, trying to play around uh, other wind conditions. Uh, this just gets a little too clunky. So. Yeah, I think you're right. I think um, loss in depth is key. Getting your deck as thin as possible with only combo pieces left is a f good way to um, get it quickly and to uh, make it more efficient. All right, so let's jump into a game here. Rank one. <laughs> what? Hold on. Let... Did say... I, I wasn't paying attention to this. Say rank one? Yeah, always foresee. Uh... There's, there's never a reason to pick another god power. So. Okay, so we're going second, and always go with 4C god power. Okay, so you don't need the Iron Tooth Goblin for literally anything except the magic one, so you can send that back. We're just going to keep digging. Um, Former Wisdom is probably the best one to keep. Uh, so I'd probably get rid of the Blizzard Bolt here. Just try to have the creature to draw with the looter. Okay, so you're not worried yeah, about you're just gonna... removing a Black Jaguar or anything. You could. This is, uh, I think it's personal preference. I'd prefer to keep the draw here. Really, you're just going to dig for the Lost in the Depths. Get rid of the Form of Unity because you want it in your deck. Or you can use the Form of Wisdom on it. Get rid of the Dimension Door. Because if you do have the Lost in the Depths, you want the two-cost creature. Okay, so this is going to be a, probably a little difficult. We didn't get our Lost in the Depths to start. We're just going to have to dig for it um, while fighting for board. So we'll see what our opponent does on turn one to see if uh, if we can dig turn one using our 4C or if we have to drop, say, a time bomb. Okay, so opponent didn't do anything, so I think, yeah, we can just go ahead and use Clear Mind God Power. Uh, just send them both back. You're, you're just going to keep digging for uh, for Lost in the Depths. Basically, if you don't see Lost in the Depths, you're just always going to send whatever's in there back. Um, the only exception being if you saw the Form of Unity, then you would probably leave it somewhere where you could use the Form of Wisdom. But for literally everything else, you're just gonna you're just gonna send it back if it's not lost in the depths. So I know we sent um, Dimension Door, or was that a uh, Apprentice? I think we sent the Apprentice back, right? Along with that one. Right. Yeah. Okay. You don't you don't want to have the combo pieces until you've hit Lost in the Depths most of the time because it's just gonna make your hand really clunky because you can't play any of them. Um, and until you've used Lost in the Depths, you're just realistically not going to get the full combo with this deck. So you're just, you're just kind of giving yourself dead cards in hand. You're giving yourself less options to deal with your opponent's board. Um, as soon as you have Lost in the Depths, you can go ahead and search for as many combo pieces as you can as soon as it's in your hand. Do you need to keep track? You know how we sent Lost um, Apprentice to the back? Do we need to kind of mentally keep track of where it it's is, at? It is useful to know that because after you use the Lost in the Depths, it's useful to know where in your deck that is. So yes, it is useful to know that we have an Apprentice directly at the bottom at okay. the moment. Um, after we've left Lost in the Depths, it would be directly at the bottom. Okay, so we've got a 2-3 from our opponent. Um, not a huge deal. Uh, I would start by foreseeing. Um, we're going to do that no matter what. So we don't want either of these. They're both combo pieces. We want them later, not now. Otherwise, they're dead in our hand. Um, I would probably play the Unencumbered Looter here uh, and just start trying to get something on board that's going to let us draw cards. Um, there's an argument for Time Bomb because it would remove the creature, but you'd be wasting the two damage afterlife. So I, I think it's good to start with the card draw creature. And depending on what your opponent does, you might even be able to remove something with a 2-1. So it's just a little more flexible. Like, you could remove this Badger with the 2-1. Yeah, if you don't need to use all your mana to fight for board, um, then you pretty much want to foresee every turn until you find the Lost in the Depths. We're already taking a little long, because we've already dug through four cards plus every mulligan and didn't find it. And we didn't unfor got unfortunate and drew the Lost of Unity instead of seeing it in the 4C, so we can't form a Wisdom it. So this is a really rough, uh, rough luck game so far. Yeah, we're going to foresee again. We're just going to do that every turn until we see Lost in the Depths. We're going to send them both back again. <laughs> Still don't have it, so this is uh, this is pretty rough. Yeah, kill that, draw the card, sure. If card incantation, um, you can probably just play the incantation. Yeah, uh, we'll just we'll draw our card. We'll save ourselves two damage here. The protected, another form of wisdom. Okay, so we still don't have it. So this is about as bad as you're gonna get. We've already dug through uh, six four Cs plus two draws. We've already gone eight cards into our deck. Lost the mulligan and still haven't found either of our copies of Lost of the Depths, so this is a this has been rough so far. Now there's a large creature down. We're probably gonna want to drop the time bomb next turn, even if it deals two. Oh, we'll see what our opponent does, but we need to start preventing some damage. Okay, another bad draw there. Uh, we gotta foresee again. Just keep looking. 
Okay, so there's a loss in the depths. Uh, you can leave the Academy Apprentice on top now because now we have the, the combo. And in fact, you can form of unity into that loss in the depths to get it for zero. You can you can get you can uh, yeah you can get it right now so that we can we can trigger. You can do that. You can play the time bomb and then you can loss in the depths it for zero after, with a pip. Okay. Okay, so this was much later than usual, but we are gonna flim our deck here. Um, we are gonna have two combo pieces in our hand. So now we're looking for the fox. Now we're looking for the fox, which we did send back, if you remember. Um, in fact, it was the second. It was the second card we we sent back, um, which means it's the direct bottom of the deck, which is also unfortunate because it means we're gonna have to foresee all the way through. So this is like probably a worst case scenario for the combo in terms of how long it's gonna take to go off, just in terms of the or our deck order. If we can win this game, then. Uh, that would be surprising, but our opponent is playing like almost a starter deck, it seems. So, so we'll see. But this is about as bad as the deck can run, I think. Yeah, I, I, I when it matched up, I saw rank one, but I've heard people say that sometimes the matchmaking gets wonky, but this is the first time I've seen it. Yeah, I, I think we might legitimately be playing a starter deck, and uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Yeah, let's foresee. So we're the loss in the depths of the bottom. Right, and we want a dimension door to school teacher. Uh, can you hide for a second, just so I can see? So realistically, you actually don't need to, because we're not going to go off until six at the most. Oh, okay. So really, you just want to dig. Even though we're already late, you can just dig all the way for the fox. So just send them both back. We just need to dig for the fox and get there faster. Um, here you can go ahead and dimension door just to draw a card. It doesn't matter on the discount. You might find another dimension door into the fox. So another dimension door here? Yeah, yeah, go for it. I think you find a one, though the other one. Oh, there's the fox, so now you can fox. And now you just need a, a year of the form of unity, perfect. Um, then you can run into the six five and then Valve champions it probably. I guess you also could have run into the 5-3. Actually, that probably would have been better. I just wasn't thinking through. Um, but this is fine. We probably could have run into the 5-3, taken 5 damage off, and then used uh, the Vow to draw, actually. Oh. Or, no, we wouldn't need to draw, because in two turns, we're going to have the combo anyway for 6. We're just trying to survive two turns. We could have killed the 5 and the 2 instead of the 6, and then taken off 7 damage instead of 6. That would have been slightly better. But Also, the 6 would have been confused and could have run into the Fox. So. Right. But I just wasn't thinking it through. But yeah, those are the these are the types of decisions you're making. Is basically just how do you optimize staying alive. So that was that was my fault, not the right play on my part. Probably won't matter because again, our opponent's playing a starter deck. It's just slow. But yeah, we would have probably lost almost anything else. And here we we can iron tooth that uh, that relic away. So that's nice. Iron tooth the relic away, and then we can just foresee to make sure we get our last combo piece and go off next turn. So just yeah, get rid of the loss in the depths. Great. Next turn we've got our combo. Uh, we should run our fox into the five three just to make sure we clear board. So the next turn we can kill our. Uh, you can go ahead and form wisdom. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's irrelevant at this point. Either way, we have a combo next turn. So we'll just combo for six since we were late. So this is about as bad as you get as comboing on on the six mana turn. That's a that's a worst case scenario pretty much. Right. We've got our clear board. That is the other risk, is sometimes you play the fox, and if your opponent is good and knows what's coming, they will try to strand the fox on board and not give you a way to kill it. Um, that is the other thing you need to sometimes be careful of. If the, if the fox is on board, you can only go off for 28 damage, so you either need to find two damage before that turn or, or do something else. Right, because if your creature stays on the board, you don't do enough damage, right? Correct, yeah. You, you miss one of these triggers for four. Um, so your you're four... You're four damage short. You can attack with the fox for two if it can hit face, but then you're still you're only doing twenty nine or twenty eight usually. But as long as you have a clear board, you can go off for you can go off for the full full thirty plus here. 
All right, well, we, we beat our rank one opponent. It's a good, <laughs> a good start. Yeah. All right, let's queue into a match. So, all right, here's a mythic opponent. I assume it's aggro because it's war. Right. So we're just going to stick so, with our clear mind, right, always. Oh. Always clear mind regardless of opponent and regardless of first or second, right? Yep, always clear mind. There we're going second again, which is again uh, more difficult, but that's okay. Let's see if we can get lost in the depths earlier this game. Alright, so let's send back the form of Unity. Again, we want it in the deck just in case we get a form of Wisdom. Uh, there's a loss in this, perfect. We need a two cross creature now, so let's get rid of the Blizzard Bolt. The Vow has more utility. Okay, options. awesome. All right. Uh, so cool siege is fine actually. Um, I prefer since we have the lost in the depths to just look for a two mana creature. So I get rid of the vow and just look for a two mana creature, and then just get the. Yep, send it back. Just we're looking for a two mana creature. Okay, so we got a, an iron trick goblin. That's fine. Or maybe our opponent could uh, could bag into a two mana creature, in which case we could just lost in the depths of that. Yeah, we we literally just lost in the depths of that blade caster. Great. Um, I was gonna say you could actually uh, you could actually foresee first. But that's okay. Oh, okay. Um, well, no, no, I take it back. I take it back. That that was fine. Um, yeah, yeah, no, that was fine. So now I would definitely foresee. So we already have three of the one drops. And we need to find a dimension door before that last one drop to go off on five. So send that last academy apprentice to the bottom. We need to find a dimension door first. Um, you're totally fine to draw that form of unity though. So we already have a dimension door though. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I I was. Looking at it wrong. Right. Um, never mind then. You can leave it as is. So yeah. yeah, yeah. So we you, draw you this next to... turn, and then dimension into yeah, the. Yeah, you draw the okay. form of unity, then dimension door into that. Yep. Okay. So uh, let's talk a little more about that um, for C play. So, so would you have for C before you lost in the depths? But just oh no, no 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 sorry okay. uh, that was it was correct to wait um, because. If you foresee before, you're just going to foresee cards that are that the loss in the depths destroys right. more than likely. Okay. So no, you were you were correct. I was I was thinking about foreseeing after. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you do risk the chance of foreseeing a two mana creature and then it just gets no wiped correct, anyway, correct. right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, yeah, you you'd probably just foresee two two mana cards and then get wiped. So no, it was correct to do it after. That was. All right. So now we want to get our combo piece discounted, right? Yeah, or do let's you foresee? Kind of, let's do we that. don't need to foresee because we already. No, no, you don't need to. Do do this first because you already know what the top card is. Then you'll foresee to look for the fox. Okay. Great. So just leave those two. What's going to happen is next turn we're going to fox, and the turn after that we're going to have lethal. So this is actually going to be a turn four lethal if we can kill our fox on board. Because we got the pip to get the five mana. Right. Hopefully we can kill the fox. I think this will be the first time I've seen a turn four. Because oh, now we actually can kill the fox because of that. So this should be a turn four lethal, actually. All right, so fox, the form yep, of unity. Fox, for, fox the form of unity. We already know the last combo piece is next in deck. And we can pip up to five mana next turn. So, so next turn we have lethal. So the bottom pieces we have lost in the depths and a uh, dimension door. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. The reason that uh, that the dimension door threw me off is in my deck. I slight flex. Uh, all of my dimension doors are in diamond. So if I see a card that isn't in diamond, I don't. And I, then it costs one. I'm assuming it's not a dimension door. So that was my. Oh, my sorry. Fault. Sorry, I'm poor. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, it just threw me off because I'm I'm used to the I'm used to judging it based on color at this point. Yeah. No, can't blame you for that. All my cards look the same. <laughs> Alright, so we killed this off and then and combo wa combo turn, wombo. Turn turn four OTK. That's about as good as you get. Our opponent is going to be uh, somewhat surprised, I would guess. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so teachers yeah. first. Then the apprentice. So we got a pip for the last one. Yep, pip yeah. the last one. And then form of unity to the god. And there's the there just combo. Turn four OTK. That's, that's about as fast as you can do it, I think. 
yeah and that, that one we'd even discount form of um form of unity with the uh form of wisdom yeah we right? actually use the we actually use the fox yeah that's true okay yeah that one just lined up perfectly. Yeah, that's no that's that's just the perfect draw for loss of the depths you have lost in the depths opening turn you mulligan everything away that isn't lost in the depths and a uh combo piece we also saved a turn because we were able to loss in the depths our opponent's creature instead of so we didn't actually have to spend two mana to play our own creature so that saved us some time because our opponent dropped a, a two drop turn one i think that's okay. the only way you can do it is if uh either you use form of wisdom into form of unity to discount or if your opponent saves your turn by playing a two drop you can target that's the only way you can get turn four i think yeah because pretty much turn one we, we got rid of 20 cards from our deck right yes turn one yeah everything except that iron tooth goblin that we had in hand we got rid of so we yeah. got rid of 19 cards on our deck turn one which was pretty good cool all right well everyone that's a uh, mirage's otk deck um he ran it last weekend um with a little bit of coaching now i'm going to be running it this weekend as well trying to have some fun and again i think mirage's win rate he was saying he thinks is about a 70 percent win rate deck is that correct I think if you play it optimally, it's in the yeah high 60s, low 70s. I don't think you can get any better than that, if I'm being honest. It's just a very draw-dependent deck. Like if you, I mean, you saw the vast difference between the two games there, um, where the first game took all the way till turn six and probably would have lost, and the second one just went off instantly, and I doubt any deck could have beaten it. So, yeah, very very draw-dependent deck, but, uh, but it is fun to play. Um, I, I, I don't think it's overpowered in the sense that it's not going to, like, not likely to win a weekend ranked, but I do think it requires a nerf because it prevents a lot of decks in the meta. Um, like you can't run mid range against this deck, right? Like mid range is absolutely drawing dead uh, against this deck. It just can't kill it fast enough. Um, a lot of control decks draw dead against this deck because they again can't kill you fast enough. Right. Um, the only cards that kind of disrupt this deck, as mentioned, are tal the Talisman of Magic and uh, Cutthroat Deception. If if you're uh, if you're a or cutthroat inside, I should say. If your opponent is playing Deception and, and they can cutthroat one of your combo pieces, then you don't have enough damage anymore. Um, so if you are going up against a Deception deck that plays cutthroat, you have two options. One is to try to go off so fast that they can't cutthroat you, uh, which in theory we maybe could have done there with our turn four OTK. Um, or you don't play your loss in the depths and you try to get some chip damage in and you try to get some extra damage via blizzard bolt via vow of champions um there are those are both cards in the deck that can go face um so that even if your opponent steals one of your combo pieces the fact that you can probably still play four academy apprentices and get spell damage plus four on the board um, allows your vow of champions and blizzard bolts to maybe get you a lethal um but realistically those are tough tough to play around so most of the vast majority of the games you're just racing to Try to get your combo first and not die. Yeah, sounds good. All right, um, you were talking about you would like to see this deck nerfed. Like, what would you think would be nerfed? The spell slinging school teacher or something else? Yeah, you could nerf spell slinging school teacher to like be a one two, so it doesn't trigger itself. Um, is an option uh, that would make the OTK here I think do twenty nine instead of thirty one, um, which would be a like a very light to this i mean the real the real answer is that maybe lost in the depths should eventually be banned because pretty much any time combos become available lost in the depths is going to make them crazy consistent and annoying to play against um i mean this has happened before with the uh zero cost portal wrangler decks right um same same concept the decks like this just usually aren't that fun to play against uh, I think this is a fun deck to play, but if you are playing against it, it can be rather frustrating because there's not much interactivity. You just are trying to kill your opponent quickly before they win their game of solitaire and, uh, and OTK you. So. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time and sharing all the information, Mirage. Really appreciate it. Um, again, I don't think it should be nerfed because it's like overpower or anything. Uh, I don't think this is likely to win any weekend ranks. Um, but in the meantime, you can you can play it. Uh, have, have, hopefully, hopefully, people have some fun with it. That's that's my parting word okay all right everyone there you go if you have any questions on the deck or for mirage either drop them in the comments or hop into the tst lounge discord uh the tst members hang out there and mirage will be happy to answer any questions or uh hear some complaints about the deck if you get blown away by this deck on turn four
All right, thank you to Mirage for taking the time to show us his Magic OTK deck. Really appreciate it. Okay, everyone, give it a try. Let me know what you guys think.